So right here at the Biscayne in uh, 11th, 12th Street, US 1, whatever, 395 overpass thing. Uh, here's the sewer, manhole cover, where it's, uh, you know, it looks kind of cool seeing it, you know, come out like that. It's really not, it's a bit of pressure. You can really, really feel it. I mean, it's not strong. You could easily just cap it off. But uh, over here, it's kind of cool. There's a larger sewer. And it's, oh, oh, look at that thing falling in there. I look like a leaf falling in there. I was going to, I was just about to demonstrate how when you stir up a little mud, you can see that it, there's not enough pressure to feel because it's a very large area here. It's out of focus. Anyway, oh look at that cup under there floating around. Anyway, when you stir up a little mud, you can just kind of see it, you know, rise up a little more than it would over there and then move to the side. So there is, you know, just some pressure there spread out. This is a very large grate though, obviously, but I mean right here, I'm gonna measure it officially using the Egyptian unit of hands. Well, it's seven inches. Well, it's not a foot, but it's 10 inches. So 10 inches deep right there. So that means that even during a tide that wasn't exceeding, that would, you know, this would begin to show flood stage stuff. This is a tide that's not even four feet, MLOW. It's 3.8, maybe 3.9. So not an exceptional one. Usually it covers the whole lane there and all the way but over to the left lane of Biscayne there. And it's, it's a large area though because it's here, large area, there for a long ways under the bridge covering the whole sidewalk and it's that almost half of that big parking lot under the bridge over there and then almost under Biscayne and right there on uh, that would have to be 12th Street or 13th, I don't know. That's 13th so that's got to be 12th right there. Basically under the bridge or parallel to it. So this, this one, this low spot covers a large area, which is actually kind of funny here is that this is exactly where they're redoing the bridge with the signature bridge or whatever. And people, everyone's like, oh, bury it, bury it, bury it, put it underground, you know, because they did the tunnel underground. But an undersea tunnel is different than a metro line, like a subway or, or a buried bridge that goes for miles. You know, the, the, bri the, the, the tunnel costs a billion dollars for like one mile. You know, that's a, that's a whole different kind of scenario. But burying this here, when you literally see that, you know, the Biscayne is already below sea level. So it's almost like burying is like the opposite way. It needs to be lifted, you know. Uh, Biscayne, regardless of the, of the, of the highway, Biscayne is, is too low here. So this, this is a pretty wimpy one because it's not even making it over here where you can see water has been a lot. It's just, just right here on the sidewalk. And it's probably already going down. I see some turbulence here. I believe it's still coming in just as strong as, strong as ever for now. We're really, really near the peak though. It's got it. See, it's really coming in there so you can see a lot more concentrated pressure through the corners of the, the four corners of that circle. If that makes sense. So like I say, just to re, 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 reiterate this is 100% the bay, ocean, whatever you want to call it. It's 100% salt water. There hasn't even been rain for more than a day now. No significant rain since two days ago. That night flood that was actually partly due to rain. You know, that had Biscayne as a river. 23rd Street was, you know, beyond my knees. So yeah, 714, that, that would be, the water was officially two feet over there on 23rd Street. Because of three inches of rain, the water was two feet deep at 23rd Street in that dip. Two feet deep after three inches of rain in a tropical climate with sandy soil that, that is extremely well drained and you know should be able to handle a lot of rain like the tropics do. So a three inch rain and two feet of water on the road. So you know regardless of whether it's a direct effect of the tide 
Think about that for a minute. Also think about the fact that part of the reason this tide was a little bit higher than normal was because of Nicole. Nicole was a way off hurricane that didn't even come nearly as close as even Matthew did, yet, the, yet that little bit made enough difference to fuck up that garage in Miami Beach because they didn't have the pumps you know, there in time. They waited until after the fact to respond, to be reactive instead of proactive when anybody could look at those tables and look at the, the tides that happened the day before like I did. I was there the day before and said, I guarantee this garage is going to flood. Anyway, that little bit is all it takes. That's how close to the bleeding edge everything is here when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, a hurricane that's hundreds of miles away that you, you're not even nearly getting the outer bands of. That, you know, you can't even see if you're on the top of a tower. And that's what, you know, made extra flooding all over hell here. And this is, you know, a solid 10 days of these happening, you know, significantly. And then more, more of them happening somewhat. So, so two high tides a day. You're talking more than 20 events in a year just during the King Tide event, bar any other floods that, that could happen. 20 guaranteed flooding tides already right now. Saltwater.